OK, so hi again, everybody. Um, happy you were able to join me for this um, nine, version 19 uh, webinar. So thank you again for making the time for this webinar. Um, as previously promised, we release two new versions every year. As always, the full release note will be shortly published on our website. At the end of this webinar, I will be happy to answer your questions. So you are welcome to send your questions on the chat option on the webinar panel during my demo. Okay, so we have two new versions every year on April and October. As always, the new features on the version are a combination of subjects we want to promote according to our roadmap and needs that come up from our customers and partners. If you would like to get more details about some of the new features, you are uh, welcome to contact me after this session. The main things we took care of on the 2018 versions were document design, as we believe that this is a very important subject. This is the way that uh, the priority using organization presents itself to his customers and vendors. Mobile, significant improvements on the priority capabilities of, uh, of the mobile solution. You will see on the demo, this is something that keeps being on the top of our list. Improving the UI and the design tools. And of course, continuing to improve and add new functionalities and expanding the priorities user options. The subjects we decided to focus on for the versions, this version and the next version, are improving the user's experience, both on the full UI and on the priority master, new functionalities, enhancements to our cloud capabilities, and keeping up with the different localizations requirements. So let's start with the UI and UX improvements. Lately, the terms UI and UX have become very present in every discussion we have. So I want to talk about this a bit, even before we see the results. As I told you on previous uh, webinars, we work with UI and UX experts on each and every development we add to the standard package. With the UX experts, we define how exactly it will work how many clicks are needed for a specific action, et cetera. And with the UI experts, we improve the way the product looks so it will be very clear to the user, friendly and easy to use. The biggest challenge in regards to the user's experience is how to build and design a system that on one hand will support the habits of around 350,000 users and on the other hand, will support new users who are used to modern user experience in a way that will make it easy for them to embrace priority. In order to deal with this challenge, we invest a lot of efforts in market research. We meet with different users, new users and experienced users, users who use many forms and functions in the system and those who do just a repetitive action on one single form, users in Israel and around the world, end users and key users from different verticals. From watching these users work and use the system and from interviewing them, we understand what are the needs and difficulties that are common to all or most of them. And these are the things we aim to take care of. Most of the difficulties we saw with new users were around the user interface. After entering a new record, they weren't able to find it. After entering a new sales order, they didn't know what to do next, and so on. As a result of that, our conclusion uh, was that these are the things to take care of in order to improve the user's experience, especially for a new user. In the demo, you'll be able to see how each one of these points was dealt with. An important comment, experienced users used to work in a certain way can continue to work as they do now. So now I will switch to a uh, priority to show you what we're talking about. So this time we didn't have any 
uh, new things on the home page. So let's dive straight into a form. Uh, I chose sales orders. The first thing you probably notice when entering the form is that the default view is the list view. Again, an experienced user that prefers to use the full record view can of course do that. The system remembers the view I used when I left the, the form in order to open the form next time in the same view. In this view, we cleaned all the distractions we could in order to give the user a clean form so he can focus on the content of the record he needs to take care of. We wanted to give the look and feel of an Excel table. So first of all, the side menu, uh, which included the direct activations, the list of open forms, and the path we used to get to this current form uh, is no longer here. We split the, those three functionalities into different places. First, the direct activations change their names to actions. You can see it on the top right corner of the screen. Some of the priority language is uh, over 30 years old, and we understood this is not easy to understand for new users. As I told you last time, we work with a microcopy consultant who helps us identify exactly that and rename these specific fields in a modern language in a way that will help the user understand what it means and motivate him into action. So the actions are now here on the top right corner. Uh, the two first actions are presented on the form for quick access and all the others are accessible from this actions button uh, that has a search option now. The first actions that uh, that are the two first actions that are presented here are the ones located as first on your action uh, list and uh, these are the ones that we think are the next steps for the users. Of course by using our uh, design tools the user can change the order of the actions so that other two actions will be presented here. The list of the active screens is now on the footer and the footer is something new that we added. You can see it on the bottom part of my screen. We have the footer. So you can uh, see the line number on the bottom left corner, the line number out of, in this case, 203. You can see the full uh, field number. And in case I'm on a numeric field, for example, this one, you can uh, you can see the total uh, sum appearing on the on the footer, just like we all know from Excel. So there's no need for F8 or right click or anything like that. We also added to the footer uh, the but the buttons for last updates and recent items here on the uh, bottom right corners uh, corner of the screen. These two options were only accessible from the home page and now they can be reached from any form. All the different tools that we have on a form are now under this settings icon um, for design, business rules, data rules, etc. In order to allow the users to better use the form space, we added a splitter. You can see it here in the middle of the screen and I can change uh, the place where we split between the header and the sublevel in order for the user to, to use it exactly according to his needs. If he wants to see the full list or maybe he wants to focus on the sublevel, uh, you can do that. Of course, this is relevant for list view only. Once I'm on a form looking at a list of orders, I may want to focus and work on one specific order. So we added a new button called expand. You can see it on the uh, left side of each line. Of course, it's highlighted only on the specific line I stand on and not on any other line. Um, it, it expands the current record when I click on that. Experienced users uh, can understand this as F4, but this is, this is not really F4 because there is no option to scroll down or to use the F4 here. Of course, all the fields, all the functionality is exactly the same. Now I can focus on my order. And when I'm done, you see on the top left corner, I can go back to my list view and continue working on other orders. 
In order to create a new record, we still have this plus icon, top left corner, but now we made it a little bit bigger and added the word new, so it will be uh, more easy to understand. Uh, when clicking on this new button, I get a new empty record on the ex extended view. The search options has also changed and are now uh, clearer. So we still have the F11 option, okay, for the experienced users who want to do a very quick search, you can still use F11, there's no problem. Now, if you look at the, at the top left side of the screen, we have this advanced search option. Now I get a window with the names of all the fields I can search from, of course, the complete list of uh, fields on my record, and I have the option to search a specific field. So for example, if I want to search uh, by status, I can do that. And here we change a bit the UI of the operators, so it will be easier to understand what we mean. We added those uh, icons, uh, and I can uh, choose, for example, starts with draft, and starts with um, completed, for example, comp. So a very nice option here is that I can have more than one value for the search, even if the values are not just one after the other. So instead of doing uh, twice F6 and all that, or F11 and again F11 and so, you can do it uh, in, a, in a more easy way. Of course, you can add more fields to the search, you can define how you want to uh, sort the results. And now you have two options. You can either click on the search button to just activate the search, or you can save it if this is a search that you want to use again. So if I'm trying to explain this in the, in the old uh, version uh, terminology, it's like an F11 that I can save. It's, an, it's a faster way to create a query. So this is how I can uh, uh, save and do searches. We also have on the top right uh, corner of the screen, another button that will show me saved searches. Okay, I can create a new search exactly like I showed you a moment ago, and I can change very easily the place between the different searches. And this, I think this is one of the best improvements uh, I am sure you all remember that in order to define a specific search, specific query as a default, in the past you needed to have some uh, detective skills because it was very hard to uh, find where it's uh, hidden. So now it's very clear to define a specific search as your default search. Um, in the near future, we will have uh, we will add the option for filters. So after retrieving the records on the screen, according to a specific uh, search, a small filter sign, just like this icon that we have here on the top right side, a small filter si uh, sign will appear on each column, um, uh, will be displayed on the, columns, uh, on the column headers, so the user can know by which columns the search was done. Additionally, the user will be able to click on this filter sign on a specific header and add or take out one or few of the search conditions with no need to clean the screen first and then redo the search from zero. For example, after uh, retrieving orders by statuses, for, uh, the user can easily add an additional value of status to the search and of course the, uh, the lines, the results will be immediately updated. Another thing we uh, did is creating a new entity. It's called profile. The profile will hold default searches for the forms in priority. The goal here was to make it easier for new users. Uh, when a new user logs into a form and the form is empty, he doesn't understand where his orders are. So with the default searches, the form will not be empty. We will link predefined searches to a profile and the profile to a user. The profiles are relevant only for new users. Experienced uh, users can still use their own searches. The second place where we did uh, UI changes is the master application. Let's hope my phone will cooperate. 
Uh, we are very happy to see that more and more. Now you all know my password. Uh, we are very happy to see that more and more users are working with the master app on a regular basis. Uh, the new version of the master includes some UI improvements and new functionalities. Did I click? OK. So when I log in uh, to the master application, I see my apps. This is a newly designed form where I can see all my applications. Of course, by clicking on the plus icon, I can scan a new application. And here, too, you can see that the screen looks nicer and cleaner. Um, also, the side menu here on the top right side looks uh, cleaner and nicer. Um, so after choosing the application uh, that we want, we can now see all the forms that are included in this application. And here we have something new. We can organize the app under headers. So I can have if on my sales and parts application, I have all those forms, customers, contacts, part catalog, a price quotation, sales orders, tasks. So in, instead of seeing just a long list of all the screens, I can uh, put them under specific headers to help the user um, understand which header he's interested in, okay? To make it easier uh, to find exactly what you need. So um, if we go to the part catalog, for example, you will see that on the list view, we added the option to show pictures on the previous screen. As you all know, on the part catalog, we have an option to link a picture. So this is not new. What's new here is that the preview uh, will show you those pictures with no other uh, specific action that you need to take. From the preview and from the um, um, full record, we have the option to do more actions. So I will show it in more details on the sales orders. Uh, what we see here is the results of my default search uh, that I have on the part catalog. But of course, I can change using this filter and do a different, uh, a different search according to the fields that are available here. Now, I would like to go uh, back to my application and choose sales orders. Here too, uh, you see that I received the results according to my uh, predefined default search. I have a filter with different fields, of course, not the fields that we saw for the parts. And here, um, I, can, I can activate an action by clicking on these uh, three points. I just have to slide the, the card to the left and I can activate um, an, an action that I added to my application. So that means that you can have an application for quotes and then send it to your customer from, from the customer site. You don't need to send it back to the office so they will mail it to the customer. Or uh, you can finalize an invoice directly from your mobile phone and so on. So if I uh, log into the to the uh, full record view of the sales order. Uh, you can see here too that we uh, cleaned uh, the way the screen looks. It's, it's easier to understand now. And here too, I have uh, the option for more actions. Uh, I can save the changes that I did and I can click on save a new uh, if I want to do a new order. This is instead of clicking save and then clicking new, I have one button to do and both of them. So now I will go back to my uh, PowerPoint. Okay. Oh, sorry. Um, everything that I showed you was done for Android and for iOS, of course, and it is also supported on tablets. On the next version, we will also change the way the app generator form looks like the form in priority in which you build the application. We wanted to give it uh, a look that is more modern, um, that will fit the, the application itself. 
We also added predefined applications. So to the purchase approval application we released on the last version, we've now added applications for hours uh, reporting to projects, production reporting, customer management, sales orders approval, inventory counts, and part catalog. That's all for the UI. An exciting addition to version 19 is the option to pay an invoice by credit card. It's called click to pay. We've talked a lot about the new service launched on version 18.3 for credit card processing. This is an international service that allows the customer to register and to process the credit card payments from priority. The fact that the complete process is done from priority saves the need to register with different entities and cuts the food chain in this process. The summary of all credit card deals can be seen from a friendly portal, including the commission that the organization is paying for each uh, credit card deal and details of the money uh, withdrawals he's made from the funds on his account. We understand that working with credit card uh, becomes more and more common, not only for individual person, but also for companies. This is why we realized there is a place for some innovation here. So we took the solution one step ahead and now we present the click to pay service. Priority customer, that means your customers, can now allow their customers to pay by credit cards directly from the invoice sent to them from priority. Uh, the priority customer can define the relevant customers and have a QR code printed on a printed invoice, or if it's a digital invoice, a link. You can see here in the middle of this screenshot of the multi-shipment invoice, a QR code. This is what we're talking about. Um, by uh, clicking on that link or scanning the QR code, it will transfer the end customer to a secured payment page. On this page, he will see the vendor's name. This, of course, will be the priority customer, your customer, and the invoice details. Next will be a page to enter the details of the payment, of the payment, the credit card details. This is what you see here. On the right side are the details of the invoice that we need to pay. And on the left side is the window to enter the credit card details. At the end of, paying, uh, of the paying process, the user will get a notification for a successful payment and a reference number. On the back office, an interface will create a receipt in priority, of course, linked to the relevant invoice. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. On the next 2019 version, we intend on making the click to pay a full payment portal. The end user will be able to log in with a user and password, see all his unpaid invoices, choose which one he wants to pay, pay more than one invoice at a time, enter credit card details or use saved credit cards, see receipts and more. Another thing we, uh, that we plan for next versions and is linked to the click to pay service is working with subscriptions. We understand that the world is moving to a subscription economy. Customers don't want to commit. They want to do a subscription and pay on a monthly basis. They want to decide when the subscription will start, when it will end. They want to give their credit card and that's it. So we are now working on a subscription management tool in which both the subscription to the service and the payment will be done directly from the click to pay portal. A unique point in this solution is that although it's a cloud solution, it is available for on-premise customers as well. Thanks to our new and innovative solution, the Priority Connect, um, for cloud customers, of course, there is no issue. The click to pay page can be part of the installation but we wanted to enable this innovative solution also to our on-prem customers. So the Priority Connect is a cloud platform that we host on Google Cloud. It is a priority software page. We host our solution on our Google Cloud and our customers and you can benefit from this even if they are on-prem customers. It requires an app server installation that can be placed outside the organizational uh, network. So not open to the world. 
Okay, next uh, subject. Uh, of course, the release note details all the new things on version 19, but I uh, chose just a few of them to go over uh, with you. The option to run the customer credit on a branch level, not only on a company level. This is something new that we added just now. Uh, we also added a new form to enter the company's credit cards, the, the ones the company uses to pay for different expenses. So to the expenses invoice work area that we all know from a long time, we added a field to choose one of the company's credit cards. And when running the procedure that creates the multi-GRV invoice for the records on this work area, we, we added a phase to also create a payment, a bank transfer payment, of course, linked to the invoice. Something that came up quite a few times for customers with fiscal years that are different uh, from the calendar year, we now have the option to decide if the document numbering will be by calendar year, as it is today, or by fiscal year. The COGS functionality is usually something that the implementation teams don't really love, um, but still it's a must uh, functionality in the system. So first we realized that the name is wrong because it refers only to part of the GL accounts involved. So we changed the name all over the system to perpetual inventory. Uh, but the more essential change is that we now have an easier way to do the definitions for uh, working with perpetual inventory for commercial customers by actual costs. That means that we also uh, restored the option to work uh, perpetual inventory by actual cost. If you remember a few years ago, uh, we took this option out of the system and you could only use standard costs. So now for commercial customers, you can also choose actual cost. We also added some controls and checks to help the person doing the setup uh, make sure they don't do mistakes. For our US customers, we now have a payment interface with HH HSBC, and we expanded the options using Ship Engine. Ship Engine are supporting shipments in the US, UK, Australia, and Canada. And of course, our module supports the same countries as well. The module in priority was built in a way that every time they will support an additional country, we immediately support it as well. The next countries the Ship Engine will support uh, soon are France, Germany, and Israel. For our UK customers, the main thing we did on this version is of course supporting the new way of submitting BAT uh, as defined by HMRC. And for our customers in Portugal, we support the last changes in the soft file. Uh, this has become something regular and we need to take care of this on every version because of the frequency of the changes the Portuguese authorities introduce. As part of the UK VAT development, we had to support a new identification protocol called OOS2. This is currently the most common identification protocol for API interfaces, and we can all use it now for future developments for customers who need API interfaces with third parties who require this specific identification protocol. Uh, so all of you can use that. You don't need to uh, develop it again. You already know we invest a lot of effort in developing more possibilities in designing the company's documents. I also mentioned that at the beginning of this session. In this version, we added the option to activate a Word template document from a command line in a code. Until now, you were able to develop a procedure and include in it a step to produce an HTML or PDF printout. Now you can do this also for a Word document template. You can control the privileges of uh, to issue a specific word template directly from the privileges explorer. I assume and I hope uh, you all remember the container option we added to the word document uh, template. The container allows the user to include specific text in a word template according to a value on a specific field on the document. So you can set oh my my phone decided to appear again, okay, sorry. Um, so you can set different texts to an invoice or quote according to the customer group or country or part family, etc. 
So on this version, we've added a significant addition. You can include a link in the text so the customer can click on it and get to the relevant landing page. We have here uh, a list of several things we took care of in this version, on this slide and on the next sli uh, slide. And my main goal here is to explain how we decide what to do in each version. Since there are so many things we want to do for each version, one of the considerations we, uh, we look at is how many customers asked for a specific solution or raised a specific problem. Uh, so we keep a wanted list. Uh, on these two slides, you can see the number of customers who asked each one of the solutions detailed here. In total, we, we took care of 162 wanted items. As always, the full list of what's new on version 19 is detailed on the release note, which will be published on our website in the next few days. If after reading the release note, you would like to ask questions or get more information regarding one or more of the new features, please do not hesitate uh, to contact me. Um, now I will answer some of the questions you sent during the demo. Let me just check uh, if there are any questions. If there are, um, if you have questions later, no problem to send me the questions even after the demo. Um, There's a question about the security of the credit card details. So um, it's, it's not through priority since we're working with an international credit card um, uh, processing company. They take care of all that and they stand, uh, stand in all the international uh, security standards, etc. Uh, in each country, this specific international company works in each country with a local a provider of the credit card services and it's the same way that you pay online for uh, for, for doing your uh, grocery shopping or whatever you do with your local uh, credit card uh, companies it will work exactly the same way because we are using the local uh, companies another question uh, a save option on the forms can we have a look at this um, yes, we have a button save on the forms and I have to say that if you don't click on that, it's okay. The, the system will still save the record just when you leave the form as it does today. But uh, for new users, it was almost impossible to understand uh, that no need for save. So after many discussions, we decided to add the save button, although it's not mandatory at all. Um, do you track the expected expired car, uh, date of the credit card? No, we do not keep the details of the credit card. We are not allowed to keep the details of credit cards. So everything uh, of, regarding the details of the credit card is kept or, or processed by the local credit card uh, processing company. Um, uh, there is a question about the updated priority master functionality and version uh, 18 of priority. So it's important to understand that the priority and the master uh, run different versions. Uh, in, the, in the master, we have much more frequent versions. We don't just have two versions a year. We have a new version each, every, I don't know, maybe a few weeks. So every time we do something, we have a new version and you can see it from your Google Play or from your App Store. You can see the version and update them. You can decide if you want to update it automatically or you want to update it manually, just like any other application you have on your mobile phone. So um, the, if you have on your priority master, you are on the latest version of the master, the answer is yes, you can use all this functionality. It's not relevant to the, to the version of priority. Of course, you have to be on a minimal version of priority to be able to work with API and, and the priority master, okay? Uh, uh, version 17 or all the versions won't support it anyway. But if you already have priority master, then the version of priority is not uh, relevant. Okay, so I see these are the questions. Um, 
as I said, if you have later on more questions, feel free to uh, to contact me. Um, thank you very much for your time. I hope you are as enthusiastic about the new version as much as we are, and that you will encourage your customers to upgrade to the newer version so they can benefit from all the new features we offer. After all, we do all this for our customers. Uh, we will send a link to the recording of this webinar in the next few days. Thank you.